of the Lord God 24-7. And I pray that we will learn to use that, and that access that God has granted us, free access. He say, call upon me in the days of trouble. And that he didn't tell us what kind of trouble, whether you went looking for it or the trouble came looking for you. As soon as you can define your situation as trouble, you have the free access to heaven. He said, call upon me in the days of trouble, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. That is the God, that is the confidence that we have in this Father that we serve. Amen. And amen this morning. We thank God for his faithfulness. Uh, we will just continue as we continue to build on what the Lord is showing us as we deal with difficult situation and leaning on the everlasting arm of the Lord. And there is no other way. You know, I told that way, when we're talking with our friends yesterday, and we said there is no magic. There is no magic to the kingdom of God. There is no magic to the things of God. It is word, it's word, it's word, it's word, it's word, it's word. There is no other way to re- obtaining victory. If you want joy unspeakable, joy unlimited, then learn to dwell in the word of God. Paul says in Colossians 3, he said, let this word of Christ dwell in you richly. The richness of the world is what translates into unlimited joy in our lives. There's a Sunday school song that we used to sing uh, back in them days. I don't know if we know it here. And, uh, and it's like, it goes, read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. If you want to grow. If you want to grow, hey, if you want to grow, read your Bible, pray every day, hey, pray every day, ha, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, if you want to grow. If you want to grow, if you want to grow, read your Bible, pray every day, learn to grow. That is the beginning and the end of the matter. (laughs) Any other thing else is an addition. This is the cruise, this is the end and the beginning of all matters that settles all things. If you want to grow, if you want to experience joy, if you want to walk in victory, that you must do. Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O oh God, your word is settled in heaven. Forever, not for a season. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever, and ever his word is settled. Nothing unsettles the word of God. The word of God is the sum total of our existence and in the anchor upon which victory is sustained. The settlement is a function of joy. When somebody is settled, you know, when you are settled, everything seems to be in order. Am I right? When this thing is settled, everything, that means the settlement brings an end to all arguments. So joyful soul, a joyful soul is a settled spirit. For me to experience joy, that means there had to be some settlement. And so divine settlement is a function of a, a content heart that has found joy in the word of God. Paul speaking to Timothy, he said, godliness with contentment is great joy. So the word of God is what brings settlement into our spirit, man. 
And I know we keep praying and people say, what is the will of God? I need to pray the will of God for my life. I need to pray the will of God concerning this business. I need to pray the will of God concerning this marriage. I want to pray the will of God concerning my children. But I dare to announce to you, if you don't already know, that the word of God is the will of God. (laughs) Ah. The word of God is the will of God. It's not some mystical thing somewhere that you need to search true. The word of God is the will of God. So forever thy word is settled in heaven and in earth. Jesus, when he was teaching us, you know, the manual and the, the, the template of prayer and how to pray and not what to pray, he said what? In Matthew chapter 6, I believe verse 10, he said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the settlement. Whatever we can, when we can align ourselves with the mind of the Father, which is the word of the Father, which is the will of the Father, that brings, you see, because whatever is obtainable in heaven becomes obtainable on earth if we know the mind of God. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what is settled forever in heaven? His word. And so in the beginning, the Bible said, John's introducing him to us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The same was with him in the beginning. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend it. So it is through the word of God. That we bring the will of God on earth here. And so it is through the word of God that we bring that which is obtainable in heaven to earth. Is that a little bit confusing? Right? It is through the word. What is obtainable? Jesus teaching us how to pray. This is how you should pray. Not what you should pray. Our father who art in heaven. We hallowed your name. We just exalt your name. We just glorify your name. We just worship you in the beauty of your holiness. That is not like you. You are beautiful. You are just beyond description. You are the Alpha and Omega. We just keep hallowing his name. You are the bishop of our soul. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here as it is in heaven. Again, in 1 John 4. As he is in heaven, so are we on earth here. And this same word is now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. So if we want to make heaven come to our life, to our home, to our marriage, to the lives of our children, if we want to experience joy unspeakable, Let what is happening in heaven begin to happen and we bring that into the vehicle of the word. Because the word of God is the will of God. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 he says something. And this is the confidence that we have in him. (laughs) Huh? Confidence is a function of knowledge. Right? Confidence is a function of knowledge. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Knowledge, uh, the world say, is power. So confidence is a function of knowledge. You say, so this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, which is his word, we know that we have that which we've asked for. Because we are not asking anything that is strange or foreign to him. We are communicating. uh, Again, let me give you one funny example now. Uh, 14 years ago, 
Some of you sitting here today struggle with understanding me. Am I right? Yeah. Right. My accent. It took you, you know, you just, even though we're speaking the same English, the accent was a little bit confusing. And so you kind of strain your ear to hear me well. Now, can you imagine if I stand before you here and speak French? Or I began to speak my local dialect. You will not understand me. So we cannot communicate. And so when we communicate, communication simply means, you know, you know when we dialogue with a tongue of collective understanding. And so when we speak the language of heaven, heaven has no option than to come to us. It is through that same power of God's word. Because this is what I, 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 as our sister was giving the testimony, and as she said, she was praying in the spirit, and then, and then quoting the scripture, you shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. And as you, you speak that, and heaven said, okay, somebody is speaking our language. Huh? Somebody is speaking my language. Let me go there. You know, in Psalm 103, the Bible says, it said, bless ye the, his angels. He said, he said his ministers. And he said, the angels who excel in strength and hacking onto the voice of the word. The angels, they excel in strength. They hacking onto the voice of the word. Now, I've said it to you time and time again. A voice is not an echo. A voice is any sound with authority and power. And so when, when I speak the word of God, when I give voice to the word, I'm giving authority. So the angels, they're hacking onto the voice of the word. So when I stand and I'm going through a situation and I begin to declare the mind of God, the will of God, the angels that excel in strength, all they are doing is they are waiting at attention. The Bible says he gives his angels charge over you. To give charge is to stay until told otherwise. So the only time the angels stop staying is when there is no voice of authority. In Hebrews chapter 1, he said, Are they not ministering spirits sent to those who shall be heirs of salvation? The word. The key to your joy. It is through the word that we activate the, 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 the life of Christ in us. In John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, The flesh counts for nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. David, uh, Solomon says, Life and death is in the power of the tongue. The enemy is using different means. So in John chapter 1 verse 14, I love John, especially John chapter 1. It's so sweet for me and I read that and I read that and I read that. It just become part of me. In verse 14 of John chapter 1 that I love, it said, The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. So, you see, it's, also, it's through the power of the word that the life of Christ is activated inside of me. <laughs> the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have beheld the glory of the one and only begotten of the Father. We need the word. Why is it important this morning? The word is in chaos right now. Forever, O oh God, your word is settled. And the mission of the enemy and the principalities and the powers of our, our time is to unsettle the word of God. 
to unsettle the promises of God concerning your children, concerning your home, concerning your health. If the word settles all argument, then something has to come to unsettle it. To unsettle means to agitate mentally or emotionally. And fear is one weapon of unsettlement. Fear is the number one weapon of unsettlement. Because agitation simply means a, 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 a terrible state of anxiety and anxiousness. They are Christians. They go to church. They carry the title of pastors and bishop. But they are unsettled. We, they allow the enemy to come in and unsettle the word of God inside of them. Then there's anxiety. There is chaos. Jesus gave the parable in a different form. Trying to Now I began to understand the parable of the sower. And it says some planted. And he talks about the, the, uh, uh, and when they planted the word, the enemy came and choked the word. And unsettled it. Huh? You remember that parable? Because it was the word was being sown, but what happened? The enemy came and unsettled the word through tons and anxiety and through worry. And it was not able to bear fruit. To unsettle is to cause one to lose focus mentally and to lose concentration. To make one incapable of functioning mentally. Is that not happening today? Many people are not functioning. They're completely, I'm not, even, I'm not talking about unbelievers. And I'm talking about non-church people. I'm talking about church-friendly people. To make one incapable of functioning mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. To cause one to lose confidence in oneself and in God. To make one incapable of making sound decision and judgment. The enemy comes to unsettle that which has been settled. And so what we do and through the spirit of God is to bring that settlement back. Through the agent of the word of God. Through the promises of God that are yes and amen. Holding on to that promises because God cannot lie. And say, God, you said it. And I will not allow fear to create agitation that will translate onto anxiety into my life. What does it mean to, to settle when the Bible says so in the book of Psalms? Is to, is to establish or to secure permanently. To establish or to secure permanently. To bring order and stability to an otherwise chaotic situation or life. That is the agent of the word. The word of God is sent. You remember when he, he sent forth his word. And the word healed them. And delivered them. The word of God is not just for, uh, uh, it's not for the, the, not to decorate our coffee table on our shelf with it. it, it it's not for some fancy songs and as beautiful as that is. The word of God, when it is released, he said, my word shall not return to me void until there is a purpose for every word that heaven release. To rearrange and to bring harmony to one's chaotic situation, the word of God was activated. Listen, the word of God was activated at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Is that not? Am I right there? And there was darkness, gross darkness, over the surface of the deep. Chaos of unimaginable proportion. And then God was said, and God said, 
Huh? The word brought order. What are you going through this morning? The word brought order to that chaotic situation. And that same word is still alive and active and is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word settles. To settle is to stabilize. The word of God is to stabilize the people of God. Whatever you're going through this morning, I want you, this morning, and, and, and I just want to encourage somebody this morning as we, as we begin pray for the move of God in our life. We need to lay hold of the power of God's word. This is why I, 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 I shy away from just standing here and telling you stories. It's of no good. It won't benefit you or me or entertain you with, you know, fine sounding words that have no basis or foundation on the word of God. In all your getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom simply means applied knowledge. How can you apply a knowledge that you do not understand? And so our mission here is to, to, to rightly divide the word of truth. And encouraging you to study, to show yourself approved as a workman that does not need to be ashamed. That is what that is the mission of the house of God. Why the reason why we come together on a Sunday or any other time to study is to, to build each other up in our most holy faith. It's not to entertain us. It's to strengthen my spiritual muscle through the agent of the word. To bring order through the word to a, a, an otherwise chaotic life. There is no magic to deliverance. The agents of God's word. In Jeremiah 23, 29. The Bible says something. He said, it's not my word like a hammer and a fire. It, 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 it's asking us a question. He said, are you not aware? <laughs> right? That my word is like fire, says the Lord. And like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. He said, are you not aware that when my word is released, it is like fire going forth? In Jeremiah chapter 5, he said the same thing. He said, because the people have done this, I will turn the words, my words in your mouth into fire. Child of God. The word is in need of the fire of God's word. That comes through a man or woman. Those who know their God. This is not a time to retreat in fear. This is not a time to surrender cheaply to the threat and the lies of the devil. This is not a time to allow the enemy to come in and have his free way. This is not a time for you to start believing in the naysayers and all these high sounding words and this intellectual empty men and women you know, that stand in the name of God and try to, 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 to bring fear into us and say this word of God is no longer workable in this time and season. Forever, not for some season. Forever, thy word is settled in heaven. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the Lord God. He changed not. 
who he was over 5,000 years ago he is the same God today. The God that walked among the children of Israel in the wilderness is the same God on earth here today. It is the same power. All we need to do is to believe him even in spite of everything that is going on. The Bible says against hope, Abraham in hope, believe in the God that colored those things that are not as though they were. It's not about how I feel. It's about the truth in the integrity of the one who has spoken that word. Then we believe to the saving of our souls. We break arguments through the power of God's word. <coughs> Listen, the entrance of God's words brings light. And this morning, I want us to pray. We are going to activate God's word to settle some unsettled and uneven ground in our lives. Amen. Amen. That's what we do. We demolish arguments. Huh? Second Corinthians 10, 4, 5, 6, and 7, I believe. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold and everything, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That means any information, any other in knowledge, every other information that is trying to come to unsettle the promises of God in your life. The knowledge of God is the word of God. So anything that is coming against that knowledge of God, that the Lord God has told you concerning your children, that I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are meant for signs and for wonders. And then suddenly drug addiction sneaked in and said, I'm going to take that child away. You said no, because the promises of God stand at short. You are a knowledge that is trying to exalt yourself above the knowledge of God over my child and you are not permitted. And so because my obedience is complete in Christ Jesus, I pull you down. You pull down every argument. Second Corinthians 10 5 said, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinions that is what is going on in the world today lofty opinions they say they are intelligent they are smarter than you you are not as educated as them and they have all the phd dds and all the ph <laughs> amen and they say oh you you guys are just some village people you are not enlightened you are not exposed how can you be walking in a coal mining town backwards as you are? You are not as exposed as those of us in the cities, you know? And so we know God. They don't know God. <laughs> Any argument, anything that will exalt itself. Courage, put Second Corinthians 10.5 there up quickly as we, uh, we begin ready to pray. Second Corinthians in King James Version, chapter 10, verse 5. Let us even start from verse 4 to 6. Just 2 Corinthians. I want to read that this morning. And this is what anything that unsettles will destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We take every thought captive because the enemy comes with all those fairy darts, those lies, right? And tell you, you know, you are, you look at how broken you are. Look at how you, you, the reason why your child is misbehaving. You are a bad parent. You don't pray enough. You, 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 you don't take them to church enough. You don't do this enough. It, 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 it is all your fault. And, and that argument will come, you know, uh, uh, and those thoughts begin to come and begin to create condemnation and guilt in you. So instead of you to stand in the liberty where Christ has set you free, now you are dealing with a terrible situation when you are supposed to be praying and interceding for the soul of that child. The spirit of guilt, shame, and, and, and condemnation comes in and cripples you. It unsettles you. You see how it works? 
all those accusations may be true. But in Christ Jesus. Because it's no longer dependent on your effort. But it's of him that showed mercy. Yes, I may have done all that you say that I did. But I'm not the person standing before you. I'm approaching the throne of grace this morning. With boldness. To obtain grace and find mercy for my son. Because there is a need. But if you don't know who you are and whose you are, then the spirit of guilt and condemnation, those thoughts, when they come, you don't hold them captive in Christ. You want to hold them captive in your own strength. Stand here in the liberty where Christ has set you free. Not your own works, not your own effort. That is the scripture. Understanding and applying the scripture. So you don't waste two days in guilt and condemnation and confessing instead of taking the war to the enemy. Is that making sense? The entrance of God's word brings light. An understanding to the simple. We apply the power. The word will continue. But I want us to pray this morning. We are going to use the word of God. To settle some unsettled situation. Especially in relation to our children. That's what I want to do. And I will continue. And as we take our communion together this morning. Standing on the sure promises of his word. Because joy is activated through knowledge. Uh -huh. Joy is activated through knowledge. You shall know the truth and the truth will bring you freedom. Freedom is a, is, is a function of joy. Right? Joy is a function of freedom. If only a free man is joyful. A man in captivity cannot rejoice. Am I right? A man who is held in bondage cannot rejoice. Only a free man can rejoice. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And so joy is a function of freedom. And freedom is a function of knowledge. I want you to write this down for this week for yourself. We already have Matthew 15. Verse 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13. Isaiah 54, verse 13 says, All the children and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And love that test because when I pray for my children, this is how I pray. I say, Lord, the area where I am lacking, take over. Yes. Huh? You see, they shall be taught by him. And great shall be the peace of thy children. And so whatever the enemy is trying to unsettle in their life, I stand here and say, all my children shall be taught by you and great shall be the peace of my children. So whatever, any area that I'm lacking, Lord, teach them yourself. And, and, and I begin to settle that. Forever, O oh God, thy word is settled in heaven. So when we stand upon the scripture and the word of God, what we are doing is that we are bringing heaven to the heart of that child. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what is his will? His word. You see how it happened? Let your will be done. Your word is your will. And your word said, my children shall be taught by you. I don't know how to teach them. I don't know how to lead them right. But Lord, this is your promise. Shall we stand up this morning? Isaiah 8.18. Isaiah 8.18 says what? Behold, I and the children... That the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. Lord, the children that you've given me, this is how we settle arguments. Eh? Second Corinthians 10 5 says, What? We demolish argument. Right? So that argument that says your children are useless. 
They will amount to nothing. They're going to be junkies. You're going to be a prostitute. They're going to be this. They are that. That is the argument coming. And you said, no, 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 no. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders, not for shame, not for humiliation, not for disgrace. The children that God has given me, they are not for drug addiction. They are not, no, 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 no. The I and the ones that the Lord has given me. You demolish argument. You settle every unsettled situation via the agent of the word. Let's pray. Just two scriptures this morning. We're going to continue. Because joy is a function of knowledge. Knowledge brings freedom. Freedom brings joy. And this is what we're doing. And we build the foundation as the Lord leads us. Begin to pray. Begin to pray for your family. Begin to declare the word of God this morning. Begin to enforce order into that chaotic situation using the scriptures. We have three scriptures we are standing on this morning. Matthew chapter 15 verse 13. Any tree that the Father has now planted, that tree of chaos, that tree of depression, that tree of anxiety, that tree of suicidal thought, that tree of sexual perversion that the Father has not planted in the lives of my children. Because before they were formed even in my womb, the Lord knew them. The Lord already ordained them to be a prophet unto the nation. The Lord ordained them for greatness, not for the life of mediocrity. And so anything that God did not plant in my womb in the time at the time of conception, no drug addiction can plant it. No teacher, no secular education or knowledge can plant what God has not planted. Whatever has been planted without my knowledge, this morning I uproot in the name of Jesus. I uproot every seed, every tree of rebellion, every tree of sickness and disease, of untimely death. You will not grow for my children to eat of your fruit in the name of Jesus. I um, I unplant um, them in the holy name of Jesus because the scripture says, I and the sons and the daughters and the grandchildren and the great grandchildren that the Lord God has given me, we are for signs and for wonders unto the nations of the earth. My children are for signs, they are not for shame and disgrace, they are not for failure, they are not for setback, they are for setup. My children shall be taught by the Lord, they are not dull. They are not dumb. They are not mediocre. They are not failures. The Spirit of God dwells in them. They shall be taught of the Lord. And grace shall be their peace. So you spirit of anxiety. You have no place in the lives of my children. You spirit of fear. You have no place in the lives of our children. For that God I stand upon this altar. Lord and I stand oh God. And I use the children under this grace oh God. As a point of contact to every child in Grand Cash. I use my children as a point of contact to every child unto the fourth generation that came out of this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak life to every unsettled situation in the life of every child under this grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Every child connected to Cornerstone Mountain Assembly from today your destiny shall blossom. You will live and not die. You shall declare the words of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Every child connected to this house, we speak over your life. We settle every chaos in your life. We bring order through the agent of the word of God. You shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be thy peace in the mighty name of Jesus. You as a woman, you as a man, you shall, you are for signs and for wonders. You are not for failure. You are not a rejected child. You are not an abandoned property. In the mighty name of Jesus, divorce will not define you, my child. In the mighty name of Jesus, the failures of yesterday will not define your tomorrow. We speak life to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak life to every child. We use the voice of the word of God. The Bible said the angel of the Lord, they excel in strength, Lord. 
and they hearken unto the voice of the word. Lord, I speak to every child connected to this house through their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. Lord, even as was testified earlier today, so shall be our testimony. No parent here will bury their children in the name of Jesus because the scripture said we will not cast our youngs in the name of Jesus. We'll speak life. Our children will live and not die. The purpose and the counsel of God for their life shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We exalt your name. We declare a turnaround for every mother that is, whose heart is heavy, for every grandmother whose heart is heavy, over that child I speak comfort of the Holy Spirit into your heart the same grace that rescued listen to me woman of God oh father God let every tears in the eyes of your daughters be dried up by divine intervention in the mighty name of Jesus Heavenly Father, even as you did it for that woman in the book of Luke, Lord, when you saw her, her only son was being carried to be buried. Your heart went out to her. Lord, I pray this morning for every mother, every grandmother that has stayed up all night weeping over the souls of their son or their daughter. Daughter, Heavenly Father God, may you stretch forth your hand of mercy tonight and wipe those tears away in the name of Jesus. May every destiny in, that came out of your womb that has been pronounced dead through drug, uh, drug addiction, alcoholism, sexual perversion, may the same God that returned that child back to the mother. May that same God return your son, your daughter back to you, whole and healthy, renewed again in the name of Jesus. You will do it, Lord, and your name shall be exalted. Thank you, eternal rock of ages, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We're going to take our communion and... Um, for those of us.